You know what, Gareth? What's interesting, it's not just 2019. It's every Q3 of every pre-having year this happens, where you get this slow fade back to the 20-week SMA, the 21-week EMA. Uh, this is 2019 over here. You can kind of see how it was slowly fading. And I mean, look at these weekly candles back over here. It was barely moving. Um, and then what happened is we woke up one morning and, you know, Bitcoin just dropped 20% and the altcoin market basically had the life sucked out of it. Um, now, what I what also is interesting, though, is it was on this weekly candle right there that a lot of altcoins bothered to get on their Bitcoin pairs. They kept going on. They kept going down on their USD pairs. But actually, several of them bottomed on their Bitcoin pairs once Bitcoin saw that like 20% drop. Now, imagine what would happen today if Bitcoin saw some type of like a 20% drop. A lot of altcoins would likely capitulate. But just to sort of cover our basis here, look at look at Q3 of 2015 fading into, into that 20-week SMA, and we got a capitulation down. And then finally, 2011, Q3, right? That slow fade down into the 20-week SMA. And then you 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 sort of kick off the the rest of the downtrend, and then it was in the in the having year where things tend to tend to pick back up. Hello, and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Gareth Soloway gives us his analysis on Bitcoin and Ethereum, Cardano, and more. He also discusses the macroeconomic drivers of Bitcoin, new developments with crypto regulation, and the road to mass adoption. So let's get started with the video. Like, my guess is you have a lot of investors that may, may be leveraging for a move up. And then when that breaks, it either stops them out by, by hitting their, their exit or they just naturally are saying, oh my goodness, look at this exit. And so let's let's all, and if, if you have a thinner market, and I think we can agree, Ben, is that the volume right now in crypto is, is pretty anemic. It is. And so if you get even a decent amount of people to exit at the same time, it probably has an outsized impact on price. There's a lot of, I really do believe that there's a fair amount of value in a few of the altcoins, you know, whether it's, I don't know if it's Polygon, I don't know if it's um, Solana or, or Cardano or Polkadot. But I do think that if you start putting them in a security, even if they, they're put in the, okay, these are securities, then you have to start reevaluating them based on, okay, well, what's their value um, in that structure? Do they create earnings or how much, how many networks are, or things are built on that specific network? And I think, I think that's where you start to come up with saying, okay, well, if we just get a little bit more clarity from the, from the SEC you could actually see some decent ability to value. And I think that's been one of the major issues that that I've had is that I just there's no transparency for a lot of this stuff. And so I find it very hard as a as a stock person or a commodity person to say, okay, this is what it should be trading. We we've got to give it a multiple. What's the multiple? Because in the stock world it's okay, you know, Apple is this type of stock, so it gets a multiple of twenty or thirty uh based on earnings. For altcoins, you can't really do that, but there's got to be some metric we can use. And I do think that there is some value here that will be unlocked, but clarity again is key. ARK Invest's Kathy Wood has predicted that a race among exchange-traded fund providers will begin as the date for her own product application approaches. A slew of ETFs has been filed recently, overwhelming the Securities and Exchange Commission, which has been reluctant to approve any. On August 8th, ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood spoke to Bloomberg about the current status of pending ETF applications. ARK's application for a spot. Bitcoin ETF was published in the Federal Register on May 15th. The SEC designated August 13th as the date by which the Commission shall either approve or disapprove or institute proceedings to determine whether to disapprove the proposed rule change. Wood, whose firm filed earlier than BlackRock did for an ETF, said, August 13th will come and go, and I think the SEC, if it is going to approve a Bitcoin ETF, will approve more than one at once. She added that most of the products are essentially the same, so it will come down to which companies have marketed them better. Wood said that ARK's research was deep, and they have been doing it since 2015, when it first gained exposure to the asset through Grayscale. When asked whether the firm would sell its GBTC holdings and buy spot exposure for its own next-generation internet fund, she was very evasive and said, I cannot talk about it. Additionally, ETF analyst at Bloomberg Intelligence, James Seifart, said, I think Kathy is seeing and hearing the same things we are. In addition to ARC, eight other companies have also filed for a spot BTC product. These include BlackRock, Bitwise, Vanek, Invesco, and WisdomTree, which have also filed applications for a spot Bitcoin ETF. 
The SEC's actions related to Bitcoin ETFs should be made in a fair and orderly manner. As a disclosure-based regulator, the SEC should not pick winners and losers. The SEC has yet to approve a spot BTC product citing market manipulation and fraud. However, it has approved futures-based ETFs, which are backed by futures contracts instead of the asset itself. Yeah, at least on the daily chart. So one of them, and again, it still has a little bit of a dump. And if you know, if we get that Bitcoin flush to let's say twenty-seven thousand that I that I've been talking about, maybe that's going to be a major trend line. I, I kind of am eyeing uh, Cardano now. Cardano right now is putting in a bear flag, which is fine by me because I'm not long Cardano. But what I do like is this trend line. See this this parallel here that goes down, and we broke above it here, but then broke below, then we broke back above. This trend line should be good support again, and that's right around twenty-seven cents. So, so again, a quick flush into that, I'd be a buyer, not as a long-term investment yet. I'm not confident enough in that, but just as some sort of buy there. And then, um, you know, looking at Solana, Solana is trying to break this support here, and then see this kind of coordinated. You have this downsloping trend line from pivot to pivot, and we broke out, and then this upsloping one. Look at how they're meeting right there. Now, this is still a fair way away. But 1650, I love when two lines converge because it's like one line is support. If you get two lines together, it's like double the support and it gives you more confidence as an investor or trader. So I think those are two that I'm kind of keeping an eye on if they dump out a little bit. Lastly, I'll mention XRP because XRP is actually getting closer to this previous pivot high from the last consolidation and it's right around 58 and a half cents. And I, would, I wouldn't say, you know, go all in there. You should never go all in. But I would start to accumulate a little bit around 58 cents and then slowly buy as it comes down to some of these uh, secondary levels. So, so again, the beauty of being a swing trader is that there's always something to either enter or exit. It gives you more possibility for action. Look at the uh, Ethereum chart just because um, you, you do see the same sort of trend line as Bitcoin has. And it's kind of interesting because all of these charts they they're semi kind of connected and we really see the connection with bitcoin and ethereum where this trend line is almost identical on the bitcoin chart and you can see that we are same thing kind of getting closer and closer to that level and to be honest so i have a short out on in verified investing crypto the service and we're in the money we're, we're short from up here um the concept is do i do i go long at the line or do i just cover and i've been dealing with that myself on a trading basis and right now, I think I would cover the short there because there is a chance of a bounce, but I'm not confident based on this chart of it not breaking down. And so I don't think I would flip it into a long. So covering a short is one thing, flipping it from being short into a long is another thing. And just a little technical analysis here is what you'll see is the more you hit a trend line, the weaker the trend line becomes. And the concept behind this is, you know, think about a door, right? You, you know, your door to your house is locked. Your cat's inside, your house is on fire, right? And you really want to break it down or your dog's inside, whatever animal you want to put in there. Um, you ram that door once, probably doesn't break down. You ram it twice, maybe three times. At some point, the force you're exuding on that door is going to make it cascade and break down. And so think about this is your doorway. And the more you hit it over and over again, eventually you hit it enough, it's going to break. And that's kind of why I'm not ready to go along Ethereum at this line. But I would say, okay, well, there's still a chance of a bounce. So I probably do cover my short. So what's your price prediction for Bitcoin at the end of 2023? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Much.